The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan with you with Weekly Perspective for the week ending 14 August 2020. Well, halfway through the month of August, we've certainly had some volatility in the precious metals markets, which I'll get to later. Right now, I would just like to say I'll start with the stock market and the big news on the stock market as we are looking on this day, the 14th. The S&P is testing the February highs, so it's looking for perhaps moving into new high territory. Uh, based on some of the technicals, it looks like I may run out of steam here, but regardless, the uh, stock market has really moved substantially up from the time it hit the March lows as have the metals as well. Uh, right now I'm on my Twitter feed and I just want to take a pause here. I posted as gold soars, Daniela Comboni says goodbye to Kitco. And um, I just want to do a shout out. She was such a class act person and her husband as well. Now that they have a new family, I'm just so happy for them both. And it was just really great. She just mentioned me in this article. I'm not going to mention it. You can read it if you care to. But uh, she was uh, classy in, in every sense of the word. So let me move on. First up is Wall Street on Parade, a citizen's guide to Wall Street. Bombshell report. Fed is aware that big banks are rigging their stress tests and letting them get away with it. Uh Pam Martins and Russ Martins, shout out to them too. Uh, it's kind of personal, but they've been uh, members of the Morning Report for a long time. Just two wonderful human beings, can't say enough. But let's go on the report. January 31st of this year, research for the Federal Reserve released a study that showed the largest banks operating in the U.S. have been gaming their stress tests by intentionally dropping their exposure to over-the-counter derivatives in the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter data is the information used by the Federal Reserve to determine surcharges on capital for a global, systemically important banks, or G-SIBs. You can read the whole article. We all know that the entire system is under stress. It's evident in so many ways. And, of course, the way most people are aware of that are financially savvy is the precious metals. They are signalers, particularly gold. That something is wrong with financial system and trust is breaking down. And of course, that's the case. From CNBC, Latin America will see record breaking contraction as the coronavirus shatters their economy. And this is according to who other? Goldman Sachs. Key points Latin America and the Caribbean have become a new global epicenter of the pandemic, and the United Nations warned several countries in the region are, quote, now among those with the highest per capita infection rates worldwide, end quote. It's more of the same. What can I say? I'm going to keep my comment uh, calm. Latin America, Brazil, Mexico, everything's breaking down, major contractions. Basically, this situation is basically taking down the economic system in so many ways. From the Great Recession blog, <clears throat> U.S. in long-term economic decline. Anyone that's followed my weekly uh, perspectives know that global economy is contracting week after week, month after month, well before this crisis. And, of course, it continues. And this is, oh, maybe uh, part of the situation, but maybe more is blamed on it than uh, what would this would be happening anyway, regardless of this crisis situation. So leave it at that. Fairly good article. You can read it. It's probably worth the read on the weekend. Of course, we get people that are really on top of things like Paul Krugman. Jobs are coming back. Krugman simply doesn't know how to add. He may have a gotten a Nobel Prize in economics, but his head can't wrap around arithmetic. Thus, he's been wrong about everything he said about the real economy, and he's never saw any of the major downturns of the past 20 years coming. Certainly, this speaker has. So, good data straight from the Fed to, you know, right from the Federal Reserve itself to prove the point. But uh, you can see the trend line pretty easily if you're not technically oriented. But uh, this one's particularly interested from the St. Louis Bank that does probably the best job. Real gross domestic product, it's been kind of zipping back and forth, more or less a flat line, trending down with the red line. And now you can see here where my cursor is basically falling off a cliff. And that is 
Their data is decent. I, I, I trust their data. I'll leave it at that. We're going to go into the precious metals now. Uh, Roland Manley from Bullion Star writes that the sustainability of the gold market compared to 2011 basically says the fundamentals have not changed at all. And I agree. In fact, the fundamental case for owning some gold is, in my view, stronger than ever. He's uh, He dives pretty deep, so I'm just going to go over the high points. Basically, I'd say any gold bug or someone that's not in the market and considering getting in, one, it's not too late. Two, you don't need to overdo it. Three, uh, if you're not educated enough, get educated. It doesn't really take too long to understand that the financial system that we currently have is under a great deal of stress and it's unraveling rapidly and will continue to do so in my view. A uh, new one is probably right behind it that the powers that want to be have uh, already put together. However, it's not there yet. So gold is probably one of the best wealth protections that there is. And you can go ahead and read this article um, at 1920 an ounce, should investors buy gold. The drivers to 1920, which was July all-time high, still mentioned the question, response number one, but <clears throat> the reasons why people buy physical gold are still the same as they've always been. Gold is financial insurance and a form of wealth preservation in times of crisis as now. So obviously something you've probably heard many, many times if you are in this market. So now I'm going to just do a little bit of an update on silver. And this is kind of what I do for our members. Um, I just take the screen and I put up information and it's um, me talking. So here we go. I wanted to explain a couple things. One is... I talked about 90% of the move comes the last 10% of the time. If you haven't seen that lecture, it's on the web, I think, multiple times. I've given that lecture, I think, three or four times. And basically, the essence of it is that it took from about 1965 through 1979 for silver to go from uh, roughly $1.30 an ounce to $6. So here on this chart, we're just looking at 1979. We see in January over here, it's about $6. And then we see that it moved up. And by the, about the end of September, it was roughly nine. So that's a 50% move. So look at the data on the S&P 500 and see how many times the S&P 500 moved up 50% in a year, let alone in a you know, nine-month time frame. So there we are, nine months into 1979. Silver's gone up 50%. Then... Through September, it really shot up and got from around the $9 level, $10 level, all the way up to 17 and then it leveled off, and then it took off for the moon. So I did a update recently, or I should say I did an interview recently with uh, the Kaiser Report. It was a podcast, not their uh, RT channel. And we talked about double parabolic. And so what I wanted to do this weekly perspective is show you what I mean by that. And I said it in audio, but this is more of a repeat. And I'm not saying we're right here right now. I just want to explain double parabolic. I'm not saying that we've only got a short time left in the silver market. Although I think we may be seeing a new high, record high in real terms, shorter than I anticipated, meaning I don't think it's three or four years out. I think it's more like one and a half to two and a half years out, but time will tell. Regardless, back on the point. So we got this parabolic move here leveled off and then a super parabolic move that's what i mean so looking at this this is in this scale you can see it better it doesn't look quite as dramatic but it's basically straight up on a different scale so we went 10 to 17 flat line slightly for a short amount of time and then from 17 18 to break out all the way up to 50. so parabola or parabolic flat parabolic that's what I mean by double parabolic. Now, it doesn't have to take on that exact form, but you get the idea. So the continuation of the chart, which is kind of broken lines, you can see it went from wherever that one stopped at the 20 something dollar level all the way up. It shows 44 in this chart, it really hit 50, as we all know. It fiddled around there, I'll say, for a little while. Then we had Black Thursday in March, and we saw silver just get decimated. But if you take the average for the whole year from January 1980 to December 31st, 1980, the average price was actually around $20 an ounce, which was far higher 
and then the six dollars an ounce it achieved as an all-time high the year before so from the all-time high the previous year of january if you triple that number six times three is 18 it really consolidated and traded at you know more than three times the all-time high from the previous year so that shows you that certainly silver is volatile but then again that move in silver actually set a new uh, average price for a substantial amount of time I consider a year to be a rather substantial price obviously from the chart you can see some of it was at you know 30 and 40 then it dropped way down here on silver Thursday and then it consolidated and made this pattern so this is from my personal account for stock charts thank you John Murphy for all you do and this is a 20-year chart of silver as you can see and the breakout actually occurred here where my cursor is in September 2003 finally got above 555 and we've had some up legs down leg and up leg and a down leg basically if you go from the September 2003 to the end of April 2011 roughly eight years all the way up major market up and then we've basically had about eight years plus on the way sideways to down consolidation from um, May 1st roughly 2011 to 2020 March and now as you can see in this chart we've moved up quite a bit as anyone following the silver market knows if you count it from the $12 washout spike low to the almost 30 level here achieved just a few trading sessions ago that obviously is quite a move and you can see studying this chart that you have several times where you get uh, some very significant moves up in a short amount of time you got this one as an example and you've got this one as another example and then of course this one here which is the big one that we're most familiar with if you've been in the silver market for a long time and I could make the case double parabolic if you're following this red line here consolidate around the 26th level I got back in wrote it all the way up to almost the very tippy top and then similar to the 1979 pattern I showed you or actually 1979 1980 it made the peak and then it consolidated around this time it consolidated around it consolidated around a $30 level for quite some time a lot longer and then of course it's been basically down 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 kind of flat and now we're back going up so lots of interesting things going on in the financial system being reflected by the precious metals I think we are basically just getting started not to say that we won't get a test of the breakout point which usually happens it may or may not occur it's already gotten down below 2450 which is kind of the first point of resistance or I should say support at this point it's now support and uh, it looks like it's going to close Friday above that level so I'll be back with you on an as required basis so I will be back with you next week with another weekly perspective. Remember, there's nothing more powerful than the truth. And in these very trying times and conditions, it is best to give the other guy, the other gal, the other person, the other human a break. It is stressful. So let's stay centered and be kind to one another I'll leave it there for this week I'll be back next week and I trust uh, we're going to see some more interesting movements throughout the sector in all aspects of life and particularly the financial markets Hello, I'm David Morgan, publisher of The Morgan Report, and as some of you may already know, The Morgan Report is about money, metals, and mining. In fact, we cover all resources, from rare earth elements to precious metals. I've been publishing on the internet for about 20 years. My primary passion is to help people build and preserve their wealth. I love to make people millionaires. I've helped thousands of people via our research in The Morgan Report which has thousands of paid members and 10 times that amount on our free weekly updates. Here's what you'll receive from our free newsletter. To the point webinars, weekly analysis of the financial markets, interviews and our conference schedule, special reports such as riches and resources and various metals price forecasts, a 
Our paid service client base is primarily small to medium-sized business owners, professionals in the industry, or the seasoned investor who understands markets and the value of precious metals. My area of expertise includes equity analysis throughout the resource sector, energy metals, base metals. We cover startups to billion dollar corporations. We focus on a special sector that makes money regardless of price oscillations and the importance of precious metals due to the ongoing currency devaluations. Our team of three analysts and support staff can help you build and protect your wealth. It's important for you to know what other people have said. We're passionate about what we do. High integrity and trust. Tell the truth and own it. If we're wrong, we admit it. Take a long-term outlook with major assets and bet a little to win a lot with speculative situations. If you choose to become a client, you will gain financial insights very few, even professionals, recognize. You will understand the importance of honesty in our financial system. You will understand how the money system influences almost everything in your life. You will be prepared for the ongoing currency crisis. And finally, I've chosen to make my life's mission greater than the individual, which means my mission statement is to teach and empower people to understand the benefits of an honest monetary and financial system. It's been a great journey so far and the best gains in the sector lie ahead over the next three to five years. I'm fortunate to have earned the status of being a leading authority in my field and helping others protect their wealth. You can email me at support at themorganreport.com or call my office at 480 325-0230.